Midsummer is brutish, nasty daylight nightmare, fascinating departure from the brutality of hereditary. Have you ever been in a place very far north or south during the months when the sun barely sets? Unless you've already grown used to it, it's both beautiful and frightening. In the unending daylight, brains accustomed to resetting themselves when it gets dark start to fuzz out confusingly, basic concepts on which our bodies depend, like time no longer make a fundamental, corporeal sense. It's disorienting and eerie, lending an otherworldly quality to everything. Ari Aster's Midsummer, a competently directed and operatic follow-up to 2018's Hereditary, situates its tale of grief, breakups, and rights in northern Sweden, at the height of its thinnel sun season. It's a smart choice for the story he wants to tell. Midsummer is obsessed with the passage of time in the cycle of seasons, and the ways humans scramble to make sense of life's big changes, like death, aging, and breakups. The director doesn't try to hide where the story is going. He knows that the viewer expects a creepy mix of gore and drug-induced debauchery, and that's what he delivers. But Midsummer isn't deeply concerned with why or how things are happening. Though the carnage unfolds in due time and is explained as needed, Aster is more interested in soaking up character interplay through the comical bumbling of these ugly Americans abroad. Much as Hereditary was really a kitchen sink family drama blended with an occult horror film, Midsummer takes the mundane misery of a disintegrating relationship and renders it as a technicolor thriller. Christian and his friends have embarked on a remote Scandinavian holiday inn in search of cultural enrichment with a strong dash of hedonism. Along with Christian and his longtime girlfriend, Donnie, Florence Pugh, the band of doofy Americans includes the anthropology student Josh, William Jackson Harker, and the thick headed bro Mark, Will Polder. The film begins with a deadly, insurmountably distressing incident in Donnie's family, which stalls the separation that's been looming between her and Christian. When Belle, William Blomgren, a Harga native and classmate of Josh's, recruits the group for a trip to Sweden, Christian sees a chance to salvage the relationship. What's better for romance than a simple commune where everyone pitches in on labor, wears flowing linen robes, and seems more than a little disconnected from the outside world? I told you that I want to go to that festival in Sweden. No, you said it would be cool to go. Yeah, and then I got the opportunity and I decided Look, I to do it. I don't mind you going, I just wish you would have told me, that's all. Dude, she needs a therapist. You've been wanting out of this stupid relationship for like, a year now. And don't forget about all of the beautiful Swedish women you'll meet in June. Okay, guys. That's not her again, seriously? Babe, what's happening? Danny. I was so very sorry to hear about what happened. I'm sorry. I invited Danny to come to Sweden. You know what she's been going through? Christian says you've got this special week planned. It's sort of a crazy festival. Special ceremonies and dressing up. That sounds fun. Unbelievable. Welcome and happy midsummer. School! What time is it? 9 p.m. That can't be right. The sky is blue. This is what 9 p.m. is like here. <laughs> How long have you two been together? Just over three and a half years. Four years. Really? Yeah. <laughs> what do you think? It's like another world. Tomorrow's a big day. Is it scary? What is it? It has special properties. What am I going through? We just need to acclimate. I don't want to acclimate, I want to go. Absolutely not. What's happening? I don't know why you invited us. That's why you look so guilty right now, because you know. We only do this every 90 years.
I was most excited for you to come. Midsummer is obsessed with the passage of time and the cycle of seasons, and the ways humans scramble to make sense of life's big changes, like death, aging, and breakups. As it turns out, neither the modern approach of treating changes like tragedies to be more nor the more ancient, even pagan instinct to memorialize them with rituals and acceptance is more civilized. Human life is violent, nasty, and explosive. This is, after all, a horror film. It's meant to horrify us. And there's nothing on earth more horrifying than existence itself. Yes, the movie says, but also number. If anything, the perspective of Midsommar is almost anti-humanist. People find ways to make the crude facts of life. The violence of acts of birth, reproduction, and death, seem less awful. But whether we celebrate the seasons of life or fight them, welcome the changes or mourn them, it's still bad. There's no escaping the brutality of existence, no dark corner to hide in. The best you can do is look it straight in the eye and smile through the savagery. Midsummer opens in theaters on July 3rd.